Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. It's Josh here. <laughs> now I've been doing a couple videos lately about the Electric Universe model and uh, how interesting it is, but I also keep an open mind and I, uh, I try to analyze each different aspect of it before I draw any conclusions. So I'd like to tackle one particular issue at a time, and today I want to talk about the notion of dinosaurs. And uh, I recently watched a documentary uh, from the Thunderbolts project. Uh, it was one of the uh, interviews where they had talked with a particular, I don't remember who it was, but uh, he said that during the time of dinosaurs, and this is the way the theory goes with them, is that dinosaurs are so large that the gravity must have been different on Earth at that time. And if they were large as they are under today's gravity they would collapse under their own weight which seems to hold weight when you first look at it if you look at how slow an elephant walks and you consider something larger and uh, how easy it would be for something to break its leg or you know to tumble over and not be able to get up or simply just crush itself so on that notion I decided to do a little bit of research and uh, look at it from both sides so, I found this page, and it was a, uh, a blogs page about, it's called Dinosaur Myths That Need to Go Extinct. And I'm going to give one person's take on exactly what happened with the dinosaurs, and then I will pause, and I'll do some more research, and I'll come back and <laughs> do another one, uh, so we can compare them. First, eight, quirks the ancient earth made dinosaurs so big. And it says, why were the biggest dinosaurs so much larger than any terrestrial creature alive today? There has been no shortage of explanations, including the idea that gravity was different, or there was more oxygen in the air. But gravity in the Met Mesozoic was the same as it is today. And in fact, reconstructions of the ancient atmosphere indicate that the atmosphere's oxygen content may have actually been slightly lower during the same time period as dinosaurs. Instead, dinosaurs such as Supersaurus got so large because of two factors in their biology. Not only did sauropod and theropod dinosaurs have special air sacs that made their skeletons lighter without sacrificing strength, the fact that dinosaurs reproduced by laying clutches of small eggs allowed them to get around the reproductive constraints that prevent land-dwelling mammals from becoming larger. <laughs> so, that's one person's take, and uh, I'm going to pull up another one here. Okay, so now I have this one here pulled up. It's called the uh, dinosaurhome.com. The Theory of Dinosaurs Increasing the Earth's Gravity. And I'm just going to cut down to the uh, nitty gritty of it. It says, So, the collision of the big meteorite with Earth and the formation of dust and smoke in the atmosphere cannot be supposed as the factor of dinosaurs' decline, because that collision occurred at that time and the effect of dust and smoke have been disappeared, and there was no later effect on animals. Although the theory of collision of the big meteorite and the formation of dust and smoke cannot explain of the animals, but at the same time, scientists hadn't made a mistake by suggesting this theory. In fact, they were close to reality. Because, in fact, the decline of animals is somehow related to meteorites, but not in the way that Luis Alvarez and his son explain. The theory of the increasing of the gravity says that the fall of meteorites in long periods of time caused the gradual increase of Earth. And, by increasing the gravity, the ability of blood systems of these animals decreased gradually. So, those animals which had weaker blood system became smaller or declined. For this reason, after the decline of dinosaurs, other reptiles couldn't get bigger, but small mammals which get stronger blood systems were able to get their bodies bigger and made the bigger mammals of 20 million years ago. So, we see that the scientists are wrong, or are not wrong, sorry, and they are right in thinking meteorites as an important factor in this phenomenon. But in the way of explaining and the quality of exogen of the meteorites, I've never seen that word, uh, they are wrong. Scientists are looking for a big meteorite which may have been able to form such a great dust and smoke on Earth. But as we know, it is not necessary to find a big meteorite, and small meteorites can also increase the gravity provided their number is large. Hmm. Well, you know, that's, a, that's another take on it. So let's see what else I can dig up here. Okay, I tracked down one last little article here, and then it's to lead me into my point. Uh, it's uh, off of uh, Galileo's Pendulum.org. Uh, was weaker gravity responsible for large dinosaur size? And I skipped down to the gravity of the situation, where he basically sums up by saying, 
The Earth's gravity, as with any planet, star, moon, asteroid, etc., <clears throat> is determined primary by its mass and size. Roughly speaking, mass is the amount of water in the planet, and that's something hard to change drastically. If you wanted to make gra gravity noticeably stronger, you'd have to add the equivalent mass of another planet or moon. Note that. Something that can't just happen spontaneously. While Earth is constantly being bombarded by tiny asteroid fragments and dust grains, and is also losing small amounts in its atmosphere to space, neither of those effects is very big. To my knowledge, nobody has proposed the idea that Earth was lighter in the past as a solution to the dinosaur size anyway, so let's leave it alone. Bam. And then he goes on. Now that statement right there, let's leave it alone, is what's kept us in the dark for so long. And the statement that he said about having something, the mass, the equivalent of another planet or moon, is exactly what leads me into my whole point here. And when you go back to the Electric Universe model, you find that the reason why science is so confused about uh, changes that could have possibly have happened in the Earth's gravity, and these could have been temporary changes, very temporary, I mean, we can pull out sections of rock where we can determine what the atmosphere was composed of. We've done ice core samples back as far as we can, but we can only go back so far. And the very oldest rocks, um, you know, there's still people who believe that dinosaur bones really exist, and they just don't. All we have is fossils, which are filled in, uh, you know, <laughs> where, where the bones, which what we find as bones are actually, you know, just mineral deposits. So it's very hard to carbon, uh, take any carbon from those times to really understand what was going on. And I'm not a scientist on this matter, but this is just from what I've found. Um, the whole idea, the whole notion that gravity couldn't be responsible, the reason why that is cast out is just because of what they said, that they haven't seen anything like that happen. They can't see how the planets would have been close enough or a moon. They're leaving out the idea that there could have been an electrical discharge between the planets. And I honestly think that right now, this science is at its infancy, but it's going to pick up steam very quickly. But there's no reason to believe that it's not possible that this theory could very well hold a lot of weight. I just used the dinosaur thing as one example, because it's one that we can pick apart and see if it's true or not. Now I have a lot more research to do on this, but this is where I come to the problem of you're only researching what other people have claimed to found. And when it comes to ancient world and dinosaurs, when we're talking about 65 million years ago, it's uh, very difficult to find legitimate, accurate information because there have been so many frauds in the past. So many people who have, quote, discovered dinosaurs that we found out they put together skeletons of dinosaurs that didn't exist, and these are just small examples of how uh, little mistakes in understanding can lead to big problems, but I'm curious to know what uh, what other folks think about the dinosaur thing, because, you know, perhaps they did have these air sacs that held them up, but you know what that just sounds like to me is wishful thinking. It sounds to me like science can't explain how something so large roamed the earth the way they did, so we say that they must have used less oxygen, or that they must have had air sacs in them, or maybe they had jet packs. But we come back to the bones. We don't even have bones. All we have are impressions of skeletons. We can reconstruct them. We can do the best we can to, to uh, try to explain these things. But unless there are 40-ton animals living today, we don't really have anything to compare them to. Um, I hope that this inform this uh, this research, you know, takes off, and that t tomorrow's scientists can actually look at this with a fresh perspective instead of just believing what they've been dished out. And it's scary to think outside the box. Nobody gets more ridiculed than someone who thinks outside of what we call modern science. But think back to history, people. The only things that have ever gotten done are by people who are willing to step outside the box. So I'm willing to take the ridicule and the heat because I know that the controversial issues are the ones that we need to address. And if we really want to understand how the universe works, I think the electrical model is a damn good start. 
So, namaste and uh, keep your dinosaurs healthy. Peace and love.